right, now for the good stuff. Exploitation. Probably what a lot of you came to this class for is to learn how to exploit some things. So we've gone through all the steps to make our exploitation worthwhile, gotten a good picture of the things we might be able to exploit. So now let's work through some of these and see if we can get a good idea of some of the main concepts of ways you'll be able to do direct exploitation. And so let's start off with our default credentials for WebDAV. We recall we used the tool Cadaver to talk to our Windows XP system. In the WebDAV directory. And it does require credentials, but we we're able to do some research and find the default credentials are WAMP and ZAMP. And that gives us access. So let's exit out of there. And I'm just going to create a file called test.txt. Put test in it. And reconnect. Make sure we can upload files. So put test.txt. Sure enough, we're able to upload that file. I can browse to it. It's in the webdav directory. It's called test.txt. Sure enough, it just says test, so not very exciting. I mean, we're able to upload a page that says test. But what will be more interesting if we can use something like this to upload and execute code. In this case, we want PHP. Since this web server obviously knows how to speak PHP, you may find web servers that are ASP, ASPX, so your IIS servers from Microsoft with the active server pages. You also might find things that use Java, so your Tomcats, JBoss kinds of applications um, that may allow you to upload things either by having default credentials like this or in some cases no credentials at all. So we have a few options here. If I go to the folder user share and web shells, I have some built into Kali, some web shells that are pre built. So we have Java, ASP, PHP, etc. So we want again PHP. So we have a few options here. Simple backdoor.php is good enough for me. Um, I really just want command execution. Some of these other ones are a bit more advanced in their capabilities, but I'm satisfied with just simple command execution. We'll look at using Metasploit, using the interpreter payload next, but this is certainly a good start. Let's up. Yep. Zamp. Put simple dash backdoor.php. It does allow me to upload PHP files. Then I'll go to that web dev directory and this time simple dash backdoor.php. And it says usage question mark command equals and then our command IP config. Not a very exciting one. There. Not particularly interesting either. Um, but any commands that we have access to, we should be able to run. In the post exploitation section, we'll look at some examples of some more interesting commands like I think it wants a plus net. How about net local group plus administrators? Now I can see all of the administrators on this system. Typically we would put a space there, but it looked like from the usage information it wanted a plus. So this is just a Windows command to ask for the administrative users. It looks like Administrator Georgia and Secret are all administrative users. So again, when we get to post-exploitation, we'll look at some more options of some interesting commands you might want to try. So let's look at one more thing here. 
We did mention that there is a Metasploit module that will automate this. Let's go ahead and start up MSF console. Exploit start MSF console. Of course, as usual, that will take a minute to finish. What I want to do, you're welcome to use the Metasploit module. We'll look at it briefly when, when it opens up, but I actually want to try something a little bit different. I want to use MSF Venom. Remember we learned how to use MSF Venom in the Metasploit section, but if we do a dash dash help dash format, we can see what we find here. In our example, we did an exe file. But now we want PHP, so hopefully there's a PHP format. Can it be any slower? There we go. So we've got ASP, DLLs, ELF, executable, Visual Basic, PowerShell, WAR files for Java, all sorts of stuff. And pretty much any programming language we want to drop our code into. We'll see that when we get to exploit development. But what we don't see is PHP, and that be a little bit worrying. If we do MSF Venom dash L for list and payloads, maybe we have another option yet. If we come over here into MSF console, we're going to use it to catch the payload like we did in our Metasploit example. We'll use that that multi-handler option after we build our payload with MSF Venom. We do a search on, say, ZAMP. Should be able to find that exploit. So exploit windows, HTTP, ZAMP, web dev, upload, PHP. It is ranked excellent. It is just going to use the functionality of it. It's going to log in with the credentials that, in this case, the defaults are correct. And upload that PHP file. So you are welcome to try this Metasploit module. Though we have seen how to do it manually. Some cases, Metasploit isn't necessary. So if we look at our payloads above Windows and above Solaris and above Ruby, above Python, we actually see some PHP payloads. So we don't need the PHP format because these payloads are already in PHP format. So let's grab PHP Meterpreter Reverse Underscore TCP. And we'll spend some time with Meterpreter seeing all the different things it can do in post-exploitation. It is Metasploit Special Payload. We saw it briefly in our Metasploit section. So I want dash P for payload. It's the payload I want. I can do dash O to see the options. We've used reverse payloads in the past. They're not a PHP reverse payload, but we expect L host and L port local host to call back to and local port to call back to. Maybe something else, maybe not. Sure enough, nothing else, just L host and L port. So L host equals IP address of Cali or wherever we want to call back to. You can call back to another system. You can put a listener like in your cloud somewhere that just listens for incoming connection. And I'll set L port equal to 1234. You can leave that as 4444 if you want to. And I'm going to output that into meterpreter.php. So while that's setting up, in my MSF console, I'm going to use multi slash handler like we did in our example at the end of the Metasploit section. We do our show options, it doesn't show anything. We need to set payload to our PHP interpreter reverse TCP. And it is important that you set the correct payload. If you get the payload wrong and, for instance, use Windows Meterpreter Reverse Underscore TCP, I know I've done that in an example in a class, and it just wouldn't finish the payload, and I couldn't figure out why, and it was a little bit embarrassing, um, but it was just because I had chosen the wrong payload, so Metasploit wasn't communicating what the payload was expecting, but just wasn't finishing, so make sure everything lines up. Make sure your payload is correct, 
and make sure you set your options accordingly the same way you do with MSF Venom. So you want to set L host, same IP address, and set L port, one, two, three, four. If I do a show advanced, this is something that comes up a lot is you notice that the listeners are closing as soon as you get a connection and you're automatically dropped into your interpreter shell. And that may not always be what you want. When we start looking at client sides and social engineering, you'll see that a lot of times you may send something out to a lot of different people. And just because one person connects to you, you don't want to lose the possibility to get more. You might get a unprivileged user first and you may end up with you know, the boss's boss's boss um, on the second one. So not having a listener there to catch it could mean the difference between domain admin and little control of one single box. Um, so what we can do to stop that and have the listener stay open for multiple connections is this advanced option. So I did a show advanced and these are just like our regular options. We say set option we want to set and value we want to set it to. So the thing I want is exit on session and I want to set it to false. Set exit on session. We'll see a few more advanced options in this class, but you see the list is very long. We certainly won't see all of them. Um, so set exit on session to false. By doing a show advanced again, you can see that that's been set. Exit on session is false. And then if we just do an exploit, it's actually going to complain. It says, Settings exit on session to false requires running as a job. So if we just run exploit, it'll just keep our handler in the foreground forever because it won't exit when the session is created. So we'll never get back to Metasploit. If we do a help exploit, you can see all these options. It says we need to run it as a job. That's that dash J, run in the context of a job. So it's just going to run in the background. We want exploit. Dash J. So now we have our payload handler running in the background. We type jobs. You can see it. It's job number zero. If you want to kill it, you would just say kill zero. So we should be good to go with our handler. Of course, we actually need to upload our payload. You can see the output here of Meterpreter. Yeah, it's just PHP code. This isn't going to be quite as powerful as our Windows Meterpreter. Unfortunately, like there is a, a Linux interpreter. So you hear the PHP interpreter. Those are certainly powerful, but they just don't have quite as many features as the Windows one. But again, we'll see that when we get into our post exploitation. So I'll do my cadaver again. Lamp, zamp, and put interpreter.php. And for whatever reason, I decided to close my web browser. Webdev interpreter.php. So we don't get a little web shell here in our browser this time. It actually looks like it's just hanging. It just says connecting here. But if we come back to Metasploit, we see we got interpreter session one open. So remember, we do sessions dash L to list all our open sessions and sessions dash I for interact with whatever session ID we want. Is the one, the help. We're not going to see everything that we see in our Windows one again. We, for instance, I don't think hash dump is in here. Um, and a lot of the extensions that we'll see, like incognito, um, Mimikatz, those aren't going to be implemented for the PHP one. We can always drop into a Windows shell. Um, we can do like sysinfo and get UID, things like that. So we do have some of the functionality, just unfortunately not all of it. But again, we'll come back to Meterpreter in post-exploitation and see a lot, though of course not all of its functionality, because like our advanced options, we could be here for a few classes just looking at those. So that's a, a couple ways of exploiting this. It, really what you feel most comfortable with will work. 
you could have just used the Metasploit module and it would have automated this interpreter um, using MSF Venom to upload. Um, you could use like the simple backdoor. If there is antivirus in place, you might have to worry about it getting popped on the web server. If the web server folders are being protected by an antivirus, we will look at some avoiding antivirus techniques a bit later on in the class. Um, with XP, we don't have to worry about that. Windows 7, it does have antivirus, um, so we will look at that. Um, but, I mean, the main thing here is not that it was even ZAMP. It's the fact that it is a web server console that gives us access to upload files. In this case, by having default credentials, though, again, it could have none. You will see, like, Open JBoss or default credentials on Tomcat. So it's not necessarily going to be PHP. You might have to do Java or like with some of the IIS, older IIS servers, they would have WebDAV open just with no password. And you could upload ASP files in some cases using some special processing. So it's not going to be, as with everything here, it's not really, you don't want to learn just this particular vulnerability. You want to learn what the real concept is. And this is, default or missing credentials with web uploads.